word sounded cool. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it sounded like, ooh, what is this? What does it sound like? It sounds like, um, I don't know, like, it's the, the two continents on the word. Just give it a little crispy chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> or a famous, a famous person. Huh? Lady Gaga. Aha. Uh -huh. It's also the name of an, an, an American museum in the 1940s. Mm -hmm. Really random trivia novel. <laughs> 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 She's in the room. I think you didn't notice her. Maybe you did. If you will. So first of all, if you don't want to speak out directly, you can use Mentimeter, and uh, there are three questions. So you can log in, you don't have to do it. And the first one is on Kismet, if you want to share something, and then they'll say, and we can share it maybe on our Instagram or something. And then the second question is, if you want to ask something to Sanda, the speaker, without talking, you can do it through writing on Mentimeter. And the third one is a community board, if you want to share something about yourself, but the project get feedback digitally. So you can also do it in real life after the event, or you can do it in real life, but through the So if you know that, there's a number, and you can write it down now, or you go. Yeah. The theme of the month, as you've noticed, is Kismet. And we have Anna, who's not in, now here. She was doing all the visuals for us, inspired by this uh, illustration that is created by someone who is involved in creative mornings. And uh, the thing is that every chapter that more than 200 chooses a theme one by one. So it hasn't been our turn yet. But it was the uh, Istanbul chapter who chose his method. And I can introduce our global partners of creative mornings before I even introduce creative mornings, what it is. Feels like it's been <laughs> Mailchimp, they are our marketing partner globally, so we use Mailchimp to send emails that you have got, hopefully. Sometimes it goes to a spam, not all the And also this month, Mailchimp, um, it's nice that are uh, doing, they, are, they want us to share that they have a new series that is called Movers and Makers, so you can watch it. It's about the life of entrepreneurs and business people. I haven't seen it. Maybe you have? No? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and some numbers, if you like numbers, like I do, like maybe half of it is enough. Uh, we have 223 cities that are involved in Creative Mornings now at the moment. There are some cities that are becoming part of it maybe once a month. There's a new chapter that starts and then maybe some pause. Like in Stockholm, there was three years pause. And there was no Creative Mornings, but now we're back. And now we're back in real life. Yes, I'm making the three-ish square. Yes. And uh, yeah, where? Now I'm back to the thing that maybe I should have introduced in the beginning. Hmm. Where are we? We're at Creative Mornings event, and this is the world's world's largest face-to-face -face creative community because it includes all the chapters that are doing this every month as a, an, an event. There is always a speaker who comes and talks on the theme, on the global theme, and this month it is Kismet. And the idea started with Creative Mornings in 2008 by Tina, oh, by, yeah, Tina Ross. Yes, I'm Hi, Eisenberg. Yeah. I lost the song very switch. Yeah, I think. Thank you. And yeah, she started in New York, and she basically started as a, she wanted her friends to come together regularly. Would it sound Pika? It was not Pika, obviously, it was New York, but it's a coffee and the buzz. Not Pika, I don't know. And uh, then she made it more formal because it was the group of friends was growing growing. And now it became a global thing. And now we are here, almost like a group of friends, just talking about creative things through the theme of the month. And it is always free of charge and we'll always. Yes, and Stockholm was one of the first chapters. It was the eighth chapter to open globally, which is quite cool. And uh, now, after the break, it is us to our host. Who is us? You might have spotted some of us. So 
we have Adriana who has just already talked to you. Here she's waiting because she's also doing the Instagram live. <laughs> Let me just match that. I'm starting to see you. Here goes. Michelle. Michelle, hi. Yeah, waiting for you. Hola. 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 specialist and the uh, email marketing <laughs> superstar. So all the MailChimp letters, she was doing them. And I know some of you connected. Let me know if you liked it. It was her doing that. Uh, Achille. Yeah. You're here, of course. Yes, she's a community builder. What her name? <laughs> I like it. Some like a month ago, I really liked it. Now it sounds strange to me, but you know what she's doing, and you can always ask her. Anna, who I mentioned to you, she's not here today because she went to a concert yesterday, so she had fun, and she, of course, was very late at home. And she's the art director, so the visuals are now by her. We have Evelina here, sitting in the chair. Hello. She's responsible for sponsorships and partnerships, so you can talk to her about that. Sina, photographer. You will see him or not see him because I think he can be seamless if he chooses to be. And I have Andrea here behind the camera. She's both taking pictures and the video. We have to all that put together. Okay. And our mission, all of us people, is to create a great community where you all feel like you can celebrate yourself and nurture your creativity. And you can, when you put the post somewhere, feel free to tag us and do the creative moments at home hashtag. I like it. And I also want to introduce our local partners, which is Subshaket, where the buns and fruits are from. They are partnering with us from the beginning. We have a mixer, it has some represents if you just uh, if you are not want to wave or hide and pretend you're not here, you are. And who are helping us this month with the venue and with reaching out to people. So that's been very nice. And how it all we also have a partner, it was just easy partnership because they also see the content. And um oat milk. Oat milk. I don't know how the how the milk. The not the real milk. Yeah. Oat milk. Yeah. interests, 
and uh, yeah, opinions, because I think it's very healthy to you know, um, have discussions coming from different points of views with different perspectives. So when I think about kismet, I have a few like associations, right? Sometimes it could be like a moment where you feel like you're right where you're supposed to be. And that's what feels like magic to me as well. Or when one thing leads to another that leads to another. So even if a door closes, you know, the typical cliche that you say, another door opens. And I really feel like that is true sometimes. And maybe it's not the door that you think, you know, would open. Maybe it's unexpected, but it's still something that leads to something else. And then sometimes you smile because you realize, wow, that's funny. You know, what a coincidence or what a funny uh, road it has been. A song on the radio that plays and then you really identify with it. Uh, maybe at the moment you're feeling the exact same thing. You've just been through a breakup or something. And then the song on the radio sings about that, your exact feelings. Uh, that also feels like, you know, wow, it's the universe speaking to me or something. Or I can relate. Someone else is relating to me as well and my struggles. Um, or different words when you're reading a book and the same thing. Someone is actually writing what you're feeling and expressing your emotions. And I think that's very cool. Uh, also, like, I wrote a crazy trip adventure with friends, you know, when you don't, don't really plan your, your trip or your adventure and then it's just something spontaneous. And then you realize uh, this is exactly where I should be with my friends or on this crazy adventure. Maybe you associate Kismet with other things or, you know, you have different experiences. So today, when you hear about, like, my road, I, will, I think I will keep using the same words over and over, uh, probably, some of them, so you can, like, write them down, because um, I should try to vary my, my vocabulary as well. Uh, the path forward, basically, uh, you to reflect and share maybe your own story, or just think about it, uh, like, how did you get where you are today? Also, to see connections between, you know, the different roads or the different doors that are closed and opened, like, okay, uh, see connections between people, because we're always connecting. I think that's the goal. With this event and in general, with community building, we just want to connect with one another, to feel alive, no? Um, at least that's what life is about for me. I think to find connections with people, with experiences, um, and also to aspire, hopefully, or maybe, you know, uh, relight the fire that's already there, or energize something that you just take with you from this uh, talk today and our discussion, hopefully. So, yeah, I'm, who am I? <laughs> Actually, um, I have been dancing for a long time. This is part of who I am. So I'm very happy a lot of people, you know, show that they like to dance today. That was one of the statements in the game earlier. And I've been dancing my whole life. And for me, dance is many, many things. It can be described as a hobby, uh, first of all, a passion, something that really evolved. Um, I started when I was six years old and I've been doing many different styles of dance. And uh, later it, it became a profession also, since I teach dance today. And I teach kids and teenagers and grown-ups of all different ages. And uh, sometimes I do some like dance performances or dance gigs in different constellations in different contexts. And I always think it's super fun. To perform. Also for me dance is a way to connect, like I was talking about before, with other people. You know, we're all, if we're doing choreography or something, we're all dancing together. Maybe we're sharing the same emotion. Uh, we're sharing the love to the music. Maybe we, we really, you know, feel the music. It's also therapeutic, so it's therapy for me. Just like I know running is for many other people, for example, or any other sport or, you know, movement that keeps you going and helps you process things that you're thinking. I would even go so far as calling it the meaning of life, because that's what I feel sometimes for me, like, okay, I'm meant to do this. You know, when you're doing something and you're like, this is what I'm supposed to do, it's a great feeling. So I wish that for everybody, that everybody finds that something that keeps them going, where they feel like, okay, I'm in the moment and nowhere else. And also, I have studied urban planning, just like some other people here. And uh, that is a funny journey because that was actually, you know, uh, a row of cons uh, coincidences. So that's also something related to, to Kismet, is like, how did that even begin? I 
have a mix of interests actually. So in the high school, I, I like most subjects. So I like both the nature, the natural science part of it, and the social sciences. I like math a lot, but I also like languages, and I also like you know philosophy. So when it came to studying at university, then I wasn't really sure what to choose. You know, my friends, most of them, actually knew that they wanted to be like a lawyer or a doctor, or you know they had like a very um, set out plan for them. And I was thinking, how do how do I even start? There's so much, especially in Stockholm. I grew up and li was living in Stockholm, and uh, I knew that I wanted to stay here. So that's what I I started to do. I just ruled out things that I didn't want instead. So I was like, okay, I don't want to be a doctor. I knew that because blood freaks me out. <laughs> I knew that I don't want to move from Stockholm. Actually, I want to stay here because at the moment I was happy here. And I wanted to still live with my parents. I wasn't ready to move on or to move out. So then, okay, in Stockholm, what universities do we have? What options are there? So this is it's maybe not like the, the best way to choose your field, but that's how I did it because I was so interested in so many things. I was like, this is impossible to pick. Uh, I could have gone for dance also. That was like a dream that I had to, you know, be a dancer full time. But then I heard all the scary stories about how difficult it is to make it, like in the dance world, and to actually be successful. So I kind of chickened out, and I was like, nah, that will just be a hobby on the side. You know, I can always dance whenever I feel it. So then I came up with KTH, the university, because I kind of ruled out everything else. I don't know why, but I was like, okay, not this place. Maybe KTH, because it looks like Hogwarts, <laughs> not because it seems super cool. <laughs> uh, also, obviously, it's like a famous university. It has a good reputation in Sweden and abroad. And it's good education. No, my family was happy. They're like, yeah, that's a proper uh, school. And then when I looked at KTH's website, like, okay, what programs do they have? I wasn't really into like chemistry or programming or, you know, some of the other programs. And I found it's called Sandhens Bignas Programmet, which is like uh, a mix of civil engineering and urban planning and a few other things. It's like a mix of different subjects, but it's still an engineering program. And I was like, okay, it sounds cool because it mixes both, you know, natural sciences, like there's some math, of course, and physics involved, but also it's about society and like urban planning and, and uh, building communities, which I still, you know, was interested in even then. Um, so, I still, you know, kept dancing on the side. This is just like a video to show the different projects that we do. Uh, me and my friends, basically. There's no sound, unfortunately. It's just from the computer. So you probably won't even hear the music, unfortunately. But we like to do these things sometimes. We would like take over public places and uh, yeah, do like a mini performance, a mini dance video. And I'll talk more about my friends as well. Or, people who like to dance with me, all these wonderful souls around me. So yeah, so I kept dancing, uh, but at the same time I was studying at KTH. And basically I had to choose, you know, a master's afterwards, like after three years. Uh, and I told you it was like civil engineering, so a little bit of architecture also. Uh, a little bit of construction, and then when it came time to choose the the masters, I, I uh, knew I wanted to do urban planning because that's what spoke to me the most. And uh, later, when I did my masters, uh, my thesis, then I came across social sustainability as as a concept uh, or as a field of, of like study, and that really spoke to me because it's about people. And I love people, and it's about um, people in the city and how to make them interact with each other, or how to create, you know, well-being in a city. Essentially, that's what social sustainability is about. <clears throat> and there are many parts in that. You know, you have to have integrated an integrated city. Uh, you have to um, have different activities. You have to have communities where people thrive where they get to engage with one another, explore their own you know, possibilities, opportunities. So then I did my thesis on social sustainability in 
the area where I was living at the moment, Fog and Crep, which has a lot to do with my story, actually, my, my neighborhood, Fog and Crep. It's a suburb in, in Stockholm, in the south, south of the south, they say. <laughs> and uh, there's not much going on there. So there isn't, there wasn't back then in 2018 when I wrote my thesis, and there still isn't, I would say, that much social sustainability. Like, the city is working on it, Stockholm Stock on how to create more opportunities for, for the citizens there, because basically it's just a residential area where people live. Um, and then we have like one pizzeria and one Lidl and very bad communications, just one bus that goes, so you're dependent on that bus. Uh, the bike lanes are not that good, and we have like a pendleton, you know, the train just passing by, but it doesn't stop there, so there's no station. So we just feel like, okay, the urban planners really forgot, forgot about us. You know, this was kind of poor planning in a way, because yeah, there are a lot of frustrations in the mornings when the buses are full, and then maybe you have to wait for the next one, or you find another option. Some people take the car, of course, which is not very sustainable. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, I wrote about like how can we develop this area because I saw so much potential, you know, in Fagerkrona, since I know the area, and I know it has a lot of value. It has like a lot of nature. There's a lake. There are forests there. Uh, there are people there who would like to see more things happening. So I interviewed people in the area as well. And of course they wanted meeting places. That's what you always need for social sustainability, right? Like a cafe or a library or a small theater, just something to, uh, you know, lead to more culture and life in the area. And uh, that was my new passion. Like, okay, social sustainability, I want to work with that as well uh, after my thesis. So I, I got in touch, of course, with Stockholm Stahl. I wrote my thesis together with them, kind of. It was like a mission from them, from the municipality. Like, okay, write this thesis about what we can, you know, develop in the area, what we can do. And so I stayed in touch with with the uh, local municipality and and the district. And that later on led to a few urban planning jobs, like projects. So I've been involved in different different projects that have been about different things and one of them was uh, what you can see on the left is like we were in an article in the local newspaper because uh, I was basically um, I don't know how to say in English but in charge of like a group of young young girls living in the area and uh, together we were um, interviewing other women young women in the area because they did a kind of a survey before this project and they found out that some women, or yeah, a lot of women in the area in Fosta, which is a part of Fogger is a part of Fosta, that they don't feel safe, and especially in the evenings, and, and uh, that's part of social sustainability, making people feel safe and making them feel uh, good and at home. So we conducted another survey and like interviewed them, the young women, and uh, we reached some conclusions. Like, okay, how can we make the area safer and also? feel more alive at the same time and like uh, related also to transport and uh, communications and making the area more accessible, you know, during all the periods of the day and, and night. So then I realized, okay, I, I'm really passionate about social sustainability. I'm also passionate about developing my neighborhood or my community because I live here and I know it quite well and also I see potential here. And then, um, the guy who works at Stockholm Stad at the municipality, he said, he said something that really resonated with me uh, at some point when we were talking, because he was introducing me to someone else, and then he said, this is Sanda, she's a very uh, dedicated and engaged Fagerkö resident. And I was like, yes, that's me. So it's funny really, because like I never, uh, you know, thought that I would end up there, you know, like, being an urban planner or that I would be super engaged in my local community. But when he said that, it just, it, it felt really good. Like, yeah, I, I want to develop Fogekor or want, I want it to move forward. And I am a dedicated Fogekor resident. Like when I die, I want that to be on my tombstone, I think. <laughs> because I, I just really reson it resonated with me. So, so then I thought about new ways of how like to incorporate or to combine all these different paths in my life, right? The dancing, the social sustainability, the fog occur, like my area, what can I do to make it grow or to thrive? And then I also ended up here in the green movement, 
which is a part of, it has always been a part of uh, like my studies and the society, of course, you know, it's, you know like Greta Thunberg, Fridays for Future, all those young people that are already active today in these issues, but also to introduce new people to, to this and uh, maybe show them how you can get engaged, how you can get involved, or do you have climate anxiety maybe, you need to talk about this, you need to make a change somehow. And Friesuset is trying with this project that I was a part of, called Momentum, they're trying to yeah, facilitate that, to, to get engaged and, and involved and make a change somehow. So this is a part of the global climate strike uh, that was on the 25th of March, but they do it regularly, where we were just marching on the streets of Stockholm in the south. And uh, it's organized by Fridays for Future, a big youth group. So then all of a sudden I was a project leader of this project, Momentum, at Frisuset. Uh, where I got to meet a lot of people, which I love. I got to, you know, try to empower them. Like, okay, uh, what do you want to do? How can we create the change together? Do you have an idea for a project? Uh, we have a budget, you know, we can help you. And then at the same time, we had a program. So we had different workshops and activities, and they were all related to climate change somehow, or to the environment somehow. So we also focus a lot on like uh, remaking, recycling, upcycling, doing practical things also with the youth, those kinds of workshops, as well as theoretical workshops. Like let's talk about climate justice. Let's talk about human rights uh, and climate change. How is that? How are they related? Let's talk about the different movements, you know, like how can we go together maybe to create a change? The Black Lives Matter movement, the, the, the Green movement or the Pride movement, like how can we all march in the streets because we all want justice in a way, you know, that's the key component. So that was a very interesting experience as well, but that came from the fact that I have always, you know, uh, believed in sustainability in different ways and also because I love to see people work together, you know, in groups and organizations and actually go to the streets or like take over uh, a space for what they believe in. So I think that's very powerful. And we'll see what happens, right, with this project, we'll see what happens with the environment, we'll see what happens with climate change. Uh, some people are more optimistic than others, but uh, we have to keep things moving all the time. And another part, another path in my life was related to culture and community. So I already talked a little bit about that, uh, how much I love diversity and like bringing people together, especially in public places, I think. We should do a lot of things out on the streets. And I know in other cities, that's more the case, you know. I'm not originally from Stockholm or Sweden, and so I have a little bit a different background. Uh, so I'm Romanian originally, and I visit my family. Uh, the, do I have to check the time? No? <laughs> I'm so scared. Two <laughs> minutes. Okay. So, so we have more, more life normally, like where I'm from, right? And, I always felt like, okay, the streets of Stockholm are quite dead or empty or, you know, what more can be done to get people to talk to each other and, and socialize. So I uh, started working with different events, basically, uh, also on the side, different, I said, jumping pro from project to project, yeah. So on the left, you have a project that's called Plexagora Share. It's like a public kitchen, also a project, culture and urban planning project by Stockholm City, Stockholm Stock where women from the neighborhood, these are neighborhoods that are usually considered not safe or uh, where you know the city wants to like really make something happen in these areas, in these suburbs. Uh, then it's like a mobile kitchen that goes from place to place and then women from the area, local women, make the food and, and give out the food for free and like, they just talk and, and interact and the food brings people together. So that it's really cool. I uh, will work with it this summer again. And, uh, the other uh, picture is from my job at Frisuset, where also a lot of people from different backgrounds, and this, both young people and people working with the project, you know, get together regularly. So yeah, as an event planner, I have always uh, believed in, you know, continuing the social sustainability path, and how can we make uh, social sustainability a reality? I think it is through culture, through dance, through music. Um, when people share interests and then they start talking about it. So I've been working with the culture festival also a lot in Stockholm. If you know it, you should visit it this summer. It's amazing. A lot of things happening in the center of Stockholm. Kungstergården, 
Opera House outside there. And yeah, so then uh, today what has happened is that all those paths have led to, uh, you know, a kind of mix of different different uh, vocations or like things that I'm doing that I feel like, okay, I should be doing them because they're right for me. But they happened in unexpected ways that I would have never foreseen. So today I'm, I'm the teacher of, of the, like I said, dance and especially one group that we call Dance Fusion, which is like a mix of different styles because I love diversity again. So I can't just pick one style and I'll never be an expert in one thing. I'll just I know a little bit about everything. So then we meet every week, and it's in my local area also, in Fabio Park, which is nice because there is actually a dance space there. And I wouldn't have found out if it weren't for my master's thesis and like the connections I had with the municipality. I wouldn't have even known actually that there was a dance space there because it was so hidden and not well advertised. So now I teach there, and uh, since I live in the area also, usually the students are invited to my place and then we hang out. And a lot of them are my friends, and we became like a dance family. So we have like an after party after the dance. So it's a really cool experience. I'm always looking forward to the end of the week because it's dance fusion time. <laughs> and uh, we just share the joy of dance and then later the joy of food when we eat together. So it's amazing. So all these connections with the municipality, with my area, Foggy Carmatus Platz is this place. It's the meeting place that has the dancing uh, room and the dance fusion. So yeah, I hope that uh, somehow you take something with you from today. My goal was to you know, light a fire. Maybe you already have your own ideas, your own plans, uh, something that you've been working on, that you believe in. So just, it sounds cheesy, but keep believing in it. And uh, don't, also don't be sad if it doesn't work out, you know, because unexpected things can happen. And even if you're torn between choices, like, okay, I like this, I like that, I like a little bit of everything, like I am, you know, when I go to an interview, job interview, it's very difficult for people to get a grip what I'm good at or who I am. Because they're like, what, you've been doing this and this and that? So confusing. We just need someone who's great at, you know, programming or whatever. So just do that. And then uh, I have to fit everything into my world, which you can also do into your context. Like I'm a generalist, I'm not a specialist. So I can see the big picture, I can zoom out, and then I, I'm all about you know, values, community, and social sustainability. So how can we make that work at this place, at this job? You know? So also I wrote like, see the connections with other people in the room, maybe you connect with someone today. See the connections in your life, like how is this connected to that? And ask questions, ask each other questions, ask yourself questions. Like what do I want to do, you know? Where, where do I want to go? And the one final video, this is also the Dance Fusion group. We uh, took the streets again, but where I live, right? So it's quite dull, it's like a gray area. But then we just, uh, this was one of the happiest moments, like for me, when uh, I felt so at home there. It's like, I live here, these are my streets, so let's just dance. And then the, the choreography was about like kids on a playground, you know? And then the, like the cars are going by and the people are walking by and they're gonna, do their laundry or whatever, but then we just film this video in the middle of it, which was super fun. And uh, these are like my friends that uh, usually, you know, are regulars, so they love to dance as well. Different ages, also like different backgrounds. One is a circus artist, one is a geologist, has studied geology, super cool. Another is a, a software developer. Uh, and the a fourth one is a communicator. So they all do different things and come from different roads of life. Sorry, I think I talked too much. So thank you so, so much for listening. We were right on time. Oh, cool, thanks. Have you had your Friday Fusion tonight? Tonight. Yes. You can go ahead. In Foggy Park. Famous bus? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Are you putting Foggy Crow on the map? <laughs> bus 165. <laughs> <laughs> the one to <laughs> something from today? Yeah, the bus now. Yes. Yeah. Because I mean, normally things happen in the city center. So I think it's nice that culture is spread out and things are actually happening in people's areas. Yeah. Well, okay, we get in, but how do we get back? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, you can bike also. I bike everywhere, actually. Mm. 
that's a possibility. The bike doesn't restrict you as much. Even though there are no bike lanes, if you're not scared of biking on the car road, hopefully they will develop that. So that Do you have these scooters? No, not there actually. Do I have any scooters there? Mm. They don't <laughs> reach there, unfortunately. I like to ask any questions. Are you trying to? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to Make get it to that. Yeah. 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 Nice. Does anyone in the audience? Have to share your questions. Yes, you have questions. No, I was actually inspired by this um, uh, truck, food truck, mm -hmm. because I work with Ukrainian women mm -hmm. and I do in Bariniki, and they want to bring their culture and so on. They were talking about Stockholm stuff and so on, and now you are here. Uh, and I wonder if we can connect and talk, and maybe That's cool. you, you can, it can be like Bariniki truck yeah, a couple of times. Like this is a way to to create, right? To to bring yeah, it's a, it's about uh, this project in particular. Praxagoras Shuk was about um, also letting women uh, kind of take over these places because in a lot of these squares in the suburbs, it's usually like a man's world. It really is. It's all usually men who hang out uh, in the public squares. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the same time, they wanted to do something that brings people together, like cooking food. But it's about the the women also deciding what they want to cook, and they're the hosts of the event, kind of. Mm -hmm. And they're also local women, so people know them. It's really cool. It's like they say hello, people that walk by, and they're like, oh, wow, what are you cooking today? They're bringing the kitchen out on the streets. Mm -hmm. So that's the concept. But definitely, we can talk more. It's interesting. And where is the truck now? Uh, I mean, it's going to be this summer, so it hasn't started yet. So the truck is like is stored away somewhere. It's actually, it's like a really cool architecture project, mm -hmm. uh, actually, it's, it, it rolls out and then you have to build it every time, you have to like take it apart and assemble it. How, how long is it in one stage for? Uh, two days, yeah. it's like a mini tour. Yeah, Yeah, but this summer they only plan for three places actually, mm, so where, it's a short, where, short where tour. In Briadeng, mm -hmm. uh, so all like different suburbs, Briadeng, Husby and Tiensta. Mm. So in contact with the Kunstplan. Yeah, you did already. Yeah, yeah. yes. Because the, right on this uh, Kunstplan, they had actually something similar where last year, um, yeah, they had, um, they built with local women, like they sewed these huge. Yeah, we saw of, them because we were there last year also. In yeah, Kunstplan. awesome. Yeah, cool. So the Kunsthalle is doing a lot of cool projects. Yeah, they're doing a lot of really. And really apparently, projects. this summer also, Kismet, like everything's happening on the same dates somehow. Yeah. Because on the dates we will be in Houston, like an art uh, salon or like an arts exhibition, enjoying the art and the food. And then in uh, when we will be in Briade, there will be Park Theater, which is this free like theater uh, experience for everyone. At the same time as the kitchen. That's cool. Yeah. Did you design the truck? No, I wasn't part of that. That was actually an, an architect who did it. Uh, it's her like project. Elin Strandruin is her name. She's very cool. Uh, architect slash artist. So uh, what we did was we were a part of a team that kind of coordinated uh, like everything else around the event. And uh, yeah, making it happen. But it was her idea from the beginning and she had done something similar before with women from different areas. Cool. No, they were named the bus numbers to remember. Yes. Ah, fusion, everything fusion. <laughs> Mix. Any other questions or something you want to share to connect? I feel like it's a lot of. Yeah, that's nice. Projects. I, I, it's spontaneous. I, I thought it was interesting like, when we were talking about like how the city is built from like uh, to enhance or like. Like connections in the city, yeah, and um, yeah. Sometimes, like when you come from a different place, you're much more used to, I guess, especially in public. Yeah. Um, this, these random, spontaneous encounters, and I feel like here as much, it's a bit harder to find that. But sometimes, especially in the summer, it's like it's different. It's really yeah. different, and it's like uh, it's so varied too yeah. that it makes a very like interesting context. Yeah. Um, Definitely. I think that's like uh, one of the urban planners' challenges: is yeah. how do we create more interactions, yeah. more you know people connecting. Also during the rest of the year, not only in the summer, yeah. because that's much easier. But yeah. how do we keep that going? It's very easy for people to just hide and like lock themselves in their houses, or 
maybe they participate in some group activity, but it's like just me and my group. And yeah, it's kind so, of a way of that. Yeah. Because we looked in like our uh, pieces too, like we did a lot of hours on play. And like there is this one theorist that like talks about how if people play in public, other people are more likely to get engaged because they see someone else being like silly or act like playing a game. So more people, are, you're more likely to interact if that kind of happens. Yeah, and that's so, so cool that you do that. Yeah, yeah. So it's like different activities. Yeah, it's super. Uh, I think related. Yeah, and, yeah. Definitely, and I I see that for as well. Even though it's weird, people are scared of dance for some reason. You know, in other cultures, it's like part of the culture. The dance, it's natural. Everybody does it. Babies, like old people. The Sweden is like, oh, I have to perform or something. No, just dance, just be free, you know. Yeah. But uh, that's the goal that I have with dance also. It's like, no, oh, just joy. Mm -hmm. Even if we have a performance afterwards, it's like everybody can join and then follow the steps or just do what you want. As long as you're a part of this, you know, experience. Question? I just, uh, my question is about to write down what Kiss meant. Us. I wrote down it's like following my fuck yeah. Mm, nice. And I think everything that you've described here is just proof of yeah. that. You know, you just completely follow what felt really good to you and I think that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's also difficult sometimes to follow what feels good, no? Yeah. But I mean because we all have different contexts, like socially and how you were brought up, your family, what they expect, everybody expect expects things from you. And maybe you don't take the straightforward path. You don't, like I said, you don't just choose to be one thing or, you know, this like career as a lawyer or whatever that's like very clear. But instead you go kind of like off the regular track and then you find your own way in the forest. And eventually it pays off. It might be hard work and people might not believe in what you're doing or, you know, not understand what you're doing. But then I think it's very important to follow your fuck yeah, or like whatever feels good. Mm -hmm. I also have a comment. So I'm currently in research and lifelong learning, right? And we'll have multiple careers, like going forward. And I think we'll be seeing more stories like yours and your story is super inspiring. And uh, your comment about going to interviews, right? People are like, okay, where should I put you, right? Yeah. Like you talked in here, you talked in here, but in the future, that's, how we will be mm -hmm. or you know like of course we'll have specialists and generalists but we'll uh people will be sort of forced to kind of like um become more adaptable to change because yeah. everything changes more so. flexible exactly mm -hmm. and that of course involves uh career change and um, lifelong learning and continuously kind of yeah. like changing so this is super cool to yeah. see in, in practice thank you yeah. i think it's both a curse and a blessing yeah <laughs> i often suffer from this <laughs> Maybe I probably have ADHD, yeah, <laughs> but that I can't focus on one thing at a time. So I, I suffer from it as well because it's like, okay, just you know, go through with one thing or finish it. But definitely, I agree, it's good to adapt to whatever is happening. Yeah, just for reflection, I really need to, it was really uh, inspiring for me. I I can really like relate so much. Uh, I just recently got into the dance world. Oh, yeah. So it has opened up so much for me, like speaking of diversity and all of that. So it's just very hopeful to see um, the combination. Yeah. Because for me, it's been like, I'm on my path and this is the way. Yeah. But like to actually be able to include so many more parts yeah. into daily life, it is really and that's why I was Afrobeats and that's yeah. why so that's what I'm into. Oh, really? Well. Cool. <laughs> so, and I'm from Fosta. No way! So, yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Like, well, yeah. she's coming with the past. <laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> yeah. 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 so, like, yeah. 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 This is our love for the night. This is our love. Yeah. Zephyr and Zephyr is meant to be. Yeah, meant to be. Nice. Where do you dance? So it's been like different places for three years. I've been in Gyalza and I've been in Korea now. Oh yeah, awesome. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. So thank you so much. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you for sharing. Yeah. Osta is a nice place. Mm -hmm. It really is. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? It's cozy. It, yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> yeah, I've been here the top of the board and now I'm really enjoying it. So oh. it's like yeah, more fun. So yeah, I'm, I'm staying in my mm -hmm. goods. <laughs> cool. Yeah. If no one has questions, I can ask.
much uh, yeah. just uh, like uh, for example when you take over uh, the public spaces uh, through movement and uh, um, music and uh, uh, so do people engage do people uh, bypassers become part of your do they yeah definitely try, definitely or yeah. do they watch or do they at least join they, they talk to us Sometimes, mm-hmm. even if they don't dance, you know, they ask questions, they're curious, or they want to do something similar themselves, or they, I think people enjoy things happening, no matter mm-hmm. what it is, even if you take part in it or not, it's like, ooh, I like this song, or what is this style, I want to learn more, but I'm mm-hmm. inspired, I think, so even if you, you don't, you know, reach everybody, most people maybe just walk by and are busy on their way somewhere, but definitely uh, some people do interact with us. And we did like a huge flash mob, I didn't have time to show you, but uh, on Seidel Stol, you know, Platnan mm-hmm. in the center. And uh, there were so many people, of course, walking by and watching. And also, that is a great place to showcase something because you have different, you know, viewing points. So people from upstairs could also look down and watch us, or people going to the subway or on the other stairs. So there was a lot of watching. And also, afterwards, we said, like, now we create the dance floor on Saige Story, after the performance, after the flash mob. Everybody should join. And we had a live band and everything. When and was that, it? That, this was a few years ago, 2019. But send us the link so we... <laughs> yeah, we sure. <laughs> it's in my presentation, I don't know. Yeah. How shall we do it? We all have your email if you were interested. Can we have our email? So like, can we send an email to everyone who attended? After the event. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so you can, can send, send the presentation. You. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you sign up. If you sign up. If you didn't sign up, you don't get it. No. <laughs> you can still sign up thing after the event. But you can highlight the link. Yeah. Definitely. Yes, yes. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Yes. 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 And the bus number. Yes. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I forgot to put that there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Excellent. But thank you for coming. Thank you.